Hi, NTNC kids. It's Miss Brooke and Miss Amaya. We're here today to um, start our prayer song. So what should we pray for? We should play, pray for friendship. Friendship. If you'd like to become more of a magnet for friendship, uh, you can sing with us. You ready? God is friendship. I am friendship. I accept friendship and all I want. Thank you, God. Over and out. Woo! And so it is. All right. What's one more thing we could pray for? Love and connection. Love and connection. If you would like to become a magnet, activate that love and connection in your life or in the lives of your friends and family, you can join us in singing. God is love and connection. I am love and connection. I accept love and connection and all I want. Thank you, God. Over and out. Woo -woo. And so it is. And so it is. There's my cat, Tomathan. All right, so now I want you to go ahead and get cozy for meditation. We'll ring our singing bowl. And we'll just take this moment to get quiet. You wanna meditate? We'll just take this moment to just breathe. We're practicing listening with our hearts. So let's practice. Take three deep breaths with me. I want you to see above your head a beautiful, beautiful star. The star is filled with lovely white light. I want you to bring the white light from that star right down through your body until you can feel it in every part of you and your heart is filled with love for all humanity and for all creatures, great and small. Your guardian is waiting for you to wrap a golden cloak of protection around you and take you to the worry train. Put anything that worries you on that tree. And then your guardian will take you inside your garden. Your garden is your soul space. Your garden is your opportunity to listen and connect with a higher force, with a higher power. Some people call that God. Some people call that the force. Some people call that the universe or the creator, whatever it is that you call it. Ah, here in this garden you've created in your imagination is a representation of your soul and all of the beauty that resides inside of you. So today we're listening with our hearts. So I want you to imagine you're in your garden. It's a beautiful maybe spring garden, flowers and trees and green grass, maybe big tall trees that are beginning to bud and show its leaves. I want you to imagine now that you can listen with your heart to things that you can't hear with your ears. Go to the biggest tree in your garden and listen with your heart if the tree has something to say. You maybe hear a squirrel rustling around in the branches above you. You can hear its sounds with your ears, but you can't understand what it says unless you're listening with your heart. Open up and listen to what that squirrel has to say with your heart. You feel a breeze come through light breeze. You can feel it on your skin and in your hair. Open your heart. See if there's anything that the wind would like to tell you. When I listen with my heart, my heart seems to grow larger more expansive, more filled, filled with love and wonder, filled with surprises and miracles. And 
now that you're in a peaceful place, I want you to think about a conversation or something that has happened to you or you've seen someone and experienced that had a tough situation. Maybe there was a misunderstanding, maybe there was an argument. Imagine yourself in your garden, engaged in that conversation now. But this time, instead of speaking, you're quiet. And this time, instead of listening with your ears to what the other person has to say, you listen with your heart. Knowing that anger and other frustrations usually stem from fear. With your heart, can you hear the fear? Replace that fear with huge unconditional love and send it to the other person. Knowing that your love always comes back received right back to your heart and fills you up just a little more. Let's breathe. Call our awareness back to this time. Sometimes listening with your heart is hard. It takes a moment, a shift, for you to shut off your ears, shut off your brain for a moment, and listen to what other people are saying with your whole heart. Listen to what they're saying with your whole heart. Hope you enjoyed that meditation. I have a book called Listening With My Heart that I read. Let me share that with you now. Hi friends, it's Miss Brooke. Today we're going to be reading Listening With My Heart by Gabby Garcia. Esperanza's tummy fluttered as she practiced her lines on the porch. Today was the class play. Waiting for Mama to walk with her to school, she paced back and forth when she spotted a heart-shaped rock. Esperanza picked it up and showed it to Mama as soon as she stepped outside. I see you found a little treasure, said Mama. Esperanza rubbed its rough surface and felt a twinkle of joy. Maybe it's a sign. For what, asked Mama. She thought about the class play later that afternoon, wondering what it would finally be like in the spotlight. To put my heart into everything I do, she answered. At that moment, they heard a scratching and a soft cry. Esperanza peeked under the stairs and spotted a kitty shaking and shivering, no mama in sight. She scooped the kitten onto her lap and cuddled her. She's all alone, I think that she's hungry. Esperanza, Esperanza reached for her lunch bag, pinched off a piece of chicken and offered it to the kitty, who gobbled it up. Mama, I think the rock is a reminder to spread kindness and love. That's what we do when we listen with our hearts. I think you're on to something, said Mama. Can we keep Cleocatra, please? Asked Esperanza, who'd already named the kitty. Queens are always welcome at our house, said Mama. If she's still here after school, we'll take her in. At school, Esperanza was more focused on the play than on math or reading, clutching her script. During recess, she noticed Bao sitting alone on a bench. He was a new kid in school and didn't speak, speak much English. She wondered if he felt lonely or scared. Esperanza found a soccer ball and kicked it over to him. A smile spread across Bao's face. He stood, popped the ball in the air, and then bounced between his knee and his head a few times. Dude's got moves, thought Esperanza. They spent recess giggling and making up hand signals. 
afterward, Esperanza borrowed Mrs. Owen's English Vietnamese dictionary. She wrote friend in Vietnamese, drew a picture of Bao and her and put it on her desk. Esperanza rubbed the rock in her pocket, listening with her heart, made her feel peaceful inside. Finally, it was time for their performance. It was too late for Bao to be in the play, but he stood at Mrs. Owen's side as a stagehand. Excitement bubbled as Esperanza waited for her cue. Esperanza walked on stage, tripped as she was about to say her first line and splattered across the stage. When she got up, she forgot her lines, so Ms. Owen whispered them to her from backstage. Heat rushed through Esperanza's body as all eyes were glued to her. She wished she could disappear. I ruined the play, thought Esperanza, rushing off stage as soon as she'd finished her part. I messed up in front of everyone. She tucked herself in behind some props so no one would see her. Esperanza noticed her body shaking and her face still burning. She took a deep breath and dug the rock out of her pocket. It was cracked and lopsided, just how she felt. Esperanza touched her hand to her heart and felt the disappointment. Bao found Esperanza a few minutes later and handed her a drawing with the word friend written above it. Esperanza nodded. She hadn't been treating herself like a friend. Esperanza realized this wasn't the first time she'd been unkind to herself. At the soccer game last weekend, she'd missed the ball that swooshed by her head and they'd lost the game. Nice work, a player from the other team yelled as the others laughed. Esperanza thought she'd let her team down and was the worst soccer player in the world, thinking those thoughts had made her feel worse. At the curtain call, Esperanza reminded herself she hadn't ruined the play. She'd had an accident, and accidents happen to everyone. Listening with her heart wasn't just about giving kindness and love to others. It was about giving it to herself too. I can be a friend to myself, thought Esperanza. When Esperanza got home, she focused on her favorite thing. She zipped down the hill on her bike and then spent the afternoon painting at the kitchen table. She also got a hug she needed from Mama and some cuddles from Cleopatra. Listening with your heart. Some days stink. Not everything will go the way that you want. You'll get upset. When this happens, you can pause, take a few deep breaths, and practice listening with your heart. You can name whatever you are feeling. Whatever you feel is okay. Listen to your body. What is the sensations you're having? Pay attention to your self-talk. Are the words supportive and understanding or mean and rude? Are you being a friend to yourself? When we treat ourselves with the same kindness and understanding we give to someone we care for, we practice self-compassion. We're gonna practice being our own friend with this book today. It, it says, wrap your arms around yourself and give yourself a gentle hug. Take a few deep breaths and close your eyes if you'd like and you can say these words to yourself. When I feel sadness, May I treat myself like the friend I need. May I show love and kindness to myself. When I feel anger, may I treat myself like the friend I need. May I show love and kindness to myself. Think of feelings that you experience that are difficult for you and fill in the blank. When I feel sadness, when I feel anger, when I feel stressed, when I feel jealousy, may I treat myself like the friend I need. May I show love and kindness to myself. Place both hands over your heart. Notice your hands touching each other and touching your heart. Take a few deep breaths and close your eyes. Close your eyes if you'd like. What loving and understanding words or phrases would you like to hear when you're having a tough time or feeling upset? What would feel good or comforting to hear? 
Take some time and see what words or phrases come up for you. You can read them to yourselves or share them with people that you love so they know how to better support you. We are all connected. Everyone messes up, makes mistakes, and feels strong emotions. It's normal. Everyone also wants to feel kindness and love. This is what connects each, uh, us to each other. Place your hands gently on your lap. Take a few deep breaths and close your eyes if you'd like. Say these words to yourself. I connect to myself through love and kindness. I connect to others through love and kindness. I connect to the world through love and kindness. Notice how you're feeling after doing these activities. You can do them whenever you want. Listening with your heart feels good. It connects you to others and reminds you to be a good friend to yourself. It helps grow a more peaceful world. I hope that you continue to grow a more peaceful world. An activity for this book might be to find um, a rock or a small pebble. You can paint it and keep it in your pocket, small enough to keep in your pocket, just something to remind yourself to be a great friend to you, to be a great friend to others, to be a great friend to all the people that are around you. I hope you have a fantastic day. If you do create a rock um, and would like to post a picture, I would love to see it. Bye-bye. Hi, friends. One of the most important parts, I think, from that story, while listening with your heart is really important, is to also listen to your self-talk. Listening to yourself talk is an amazing exercise to see where you are. Sometimes when I make a mistake, I might think not so nice things about myself. Watch those thoughts. Disconnect from those thoughts and retrain yourself to remember that you're just learning. It's called a growth mindset. You're just learning. Everyone makes mistakes. Everyone messes up. It's totally normal. And if you weren't making mistakes, that would be the problem because that means you're not trying and you're not learning. So making mistakes is totally normal and natural. I tell my students that they should be making at least 100 mistakes a day and forgiving yourself for those mistakes. There's nothing to forgive. You're just learning. Make sure to watch your self-talk this week and tell me. Uh, you can reply here or you can call me if you'd like and let me know some of the self-talk that you noticed this week. You might also encourage your family to watch their self-talk. If you notice mom or dad or grandma or grandpa, your brothers or sisters getting down on themselves, you could teach them how to listen to their own hearts, to listen to their own thoughts, and to remind them that they are always loved. No matter what, no matter how many mistakes you made, you're filled with love. That's what you're made of. So you're always loved, you're always liked, and you're always cared for and supported in making your mistakes and learning your life's lessons. I hope that you can find some peace in your heart today, watching those thoughts, visiting your garden, using our prayer song, and I hope that you have a fantastic day. I hope to see you again in soon in person, and I love you all so much. Goodbye.